There are huge CRMs with robust functionality, and still smaller CRMs keep emerging like mushrooms up the drain. Why? Well, because no one actually likes those huge CRMs. So if you think about entering the market, you have a good fighting chance if you do everything right. Hi, and welcome back. Today, we'll discuss tactics and strategies of launching your own CRM. Of course, with some practical tips on designing it. Let's go. Why go niche? Competing against giants like Salesforce doesn't seem to be very appealing, but you actually don't have to. Large platforms do offer extensive features and integrations, but it often comes at costs of complexity. They require significant time and technical skill to customize them for their specific business needs. And it can be a major barrier for small and medium-sized businesses. This is where niche CRMs come into play. Instead of trying to create another huge CRM that will be suitable for everyone and no one at the same time, you can choose a specific niche and focus on its specific needs and requirements. Instead of forcing a poor marketer, sales or customer relationship representatives to spend hours putting a CRM together like a puzzle to customize it to their needs, you offer them templates adjust specifically to their businesses. They eliminate the generic one-size-fits-all model and provide solutions that are exactly what a particular segment needs, without the bloat and confusion of unnecessary features. Let's walk it step by step. What are the niche advantages? First, you can offer tailored solutions. Niche CRMs are developed with an understanding of their target audience's unique needs and challenges. For instance, a CRM tailored for SaaS companies focused on digital marketing might include features for managing online campaigns, tracking customer interactions across multiple digital channels, and integrating with various advertising platforms. These tools are directly relevant to their daily operations, which generic CRMs might overlook. Next, it's a quicker onboarding. Because these systems are tailored to the specific like terminology, processes, and workflows of their target users, the learning curve is significantly reduced. New users find it easier to adopt and integrate CRM into their operations, leading to faster and more successful onboarding experiences. Moreover, you can offer increased user engagement when users see that a CRM understands their specific needs and offer tools that are immediately useful, they are more likely to engage deeply with the platform. This engagement translates into higher satisfaction rates and better overall adoption. Finally, all of this translates into competitive edge. If you're developing a CRM, targeting a niche market means less competition and greater chance to become a market leader within that specific niche. While giants like Salesforce dominate the general CRM market, a well-designed niche CRM can dominate its segment, creating loyal customers and strong, sustainable business model. So how do you go about developing your CRM platform? Let's talk about the main steps of CRM design process. Let us illustrate the CRM software design process using the example of Griddle, one of our recent clients. Griddle, now called ClientJoy, went exactly the way we discussed before and choose a narrow niche of freelancers and small agencies. It was launched back in 2013, so when Elkin joined the project, the design already needed significant improvements. We started with baseline analysis, since the task was to redesign the app. Griddle was a complex app with a steam learning curve. It had a rich functionality for users to manage their leads, proposals, invoices, and email templates. Luckily for us, Griddle used its Packlet app to register everything their users did in the app. So we could review the recordings to understand which features get used more and which are completely ignored. To figure out how each feature worked and why it was even necessary for the app, we made a detailed sitemap of the original product. Then we moved on to the next step competitive research. To determine the features needed to make our client's app more competitive, we conducted a competitive study of 11 top CRM players. What interested us the most were the specific points where our target audience was not satisfied with the existing solutions. What features did users dislike in this larger CRMs, or what features did they lack? The research gave us insights into worse features we could implement, yet those were only assumptions. To verify them, we had to conduct user interviews. We conducted six in-depth interviews with Griddle users to deepen our understanding of what features they wanted or lacked. Since no one from the product team was presented on those calls, responses didn't hesitate to tell about 
all the app shortcomings they faced. Thus, we found some insights and place that could be improved. To structure the information, we used empathy mapping and a snippet of which you can now see on the screen. After this, we moved to information architecture. After the research phase, we were ready to move to the design itself. First, we defined the scope of the app's future features. Next, we needed to understand the relationship between the old and the new functional units. To visualize the new app structure, we created a high-level information architecture. We kept in mind the user flows specific for the niche to make the work process as streamlined as possible. You can now see on the screen a fragment of the information architecture we've made for Griddle. From there on, we moved to wireframing and prototyping, designing the new functionality and improving the usability of the existing features. Client Joy's initial goal was to boost the company's growth with a redesign. Given that the renewed app actually raised the 800k in a pre-series funding, the goal was achieved. We've had the experience of working with CRMs, we were able to move smoothly and step by step. But let me share with you top mistakes to avoid in building a CRM system that I often notice when working with the clients on redesigning their existing CRM systems. First, confusing navigation. The simpler the user flow is, the quicker users can find necessary features or information. The data says that employees spend around 8% of their time on searching for information they need to proceed with their tasks. The good CRM UX is called on to decrease the percentage, ideally to zero. Next pitfall is chaotic forms and elements. To collect and systematize the customer data, the users usually need to fill out a lot of forms. When they are complex or unclear, it can become a huge problem. Text on buttons and input fields should make it obvious what the button does or what data one should enter. Limited accessibility. You should make sure your CRM is accessible to people with disabilities. The easiest way to make your product more accessible is to keep the proper contrast ratio of text and background colors. Quite often, CRM system design requires a white label approach so that users can change the colors and logos according to their company's brand colors. However, even when designing such customization options, you should always keep in mind whether the chosen color scheme will end up readable. Another issue is outdated visual design. CRM app UI design impacts user engagement as well. Many established CRMs have over a decade long history and their visuals still send nostalgic Windows XP vibes. Some owners are reluctant to introduce more modern looks so as not to alienate the established users. This point seems superficial, but Seeing a modern design immediately signals to users that the product is up to date and doesn't lose to competitors. That's why Serum products constantly supply Alekin's portfolio with impressive before and after pictures like this one. In summary, a well-designed CRM that corresponds with the needs and wants of its niche target audience can transform the way users interact with their customers and streamline internal processes. An emphasis is on well-designed. Got any stories about CRM fails or wins? Drop them in the comments below, I'd love to hear about your experiences. If you find this video useful, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe and see you in the next one.